around the world across the globe there are many variations of culture as we are living with more than 7 billion people in this earth eating with bare hands sitting in front with taxi driver bowing when greeting and thanking someone shove your face on birthday cake slurp the soup loudly and many more but today we are going to look on culture in organization or corporate culture we will be looking at five major work-related values based from Hofstadter's cultural dimension theory. But first, who is Hofstadter? Heert Hofstadter was a Dutch social psychologist, IBM employee, and a professor emeritus of organization anthropology and international management at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. He focused his work on the study of cultures across nations. His work in cultural dimensions in a global perspective has been used widely like widely in many fields including psychology of course unfortunately he passed away on 12 february 2020 at the age of 91 years old may his soul rest in peace now let's look on the first value power distance power distance in corporate culture means the degree to which different cultures encourage or maintain power and status differences between interactions mm, too formal Power distance is a degree of inequality that exists and is accepted between people with and without power. That's better. Culture that is high on power distance develop rules to maintain and strengthen status relationships. Meanwhile, cultures with low power distance minimize rules and customs, means they ignore or if not eliminate statuses between people. Countries with high power distance include Malaysia, Indonesia and Philippines. Denmark, New Zealand, and Sweden are some countries with low power distance. Now, how do you know your company is high in power distance? Typically, the employees like to be guided and directed and would conform often, you know, high conformity. This is because of rules and rules and rules that have been set which causing the employee to follow the rules and just follow as what the high status employees have decided. Pretty intense, huh? Second is uncertainty avoidance. Now, uncertainty avoidance is the degree to which different cultures develop ways to deal with anxiety and stress caused by uncertainty or unpredictability, such as profits and losses or organization restructuring. Cultures that is high on uncertainty avoidance index develop highly refined rules and rituals that are mandatory and become part of a rubric and normal way of operating. An example of country with high uncertainty avoidance index is Japan. Fun fact. Most companies in Japan incorporate morning exercise into daily morning meeting to improve employees' productivity level. How cute is that? Also, in Japan, having drinks after work is like part of the work too. Japanese believe that having drinks with your boss and colleagues after work could establish a kind of friendship that is not possible to have when working. Third, individualism collectivism dimension. It refers to the degree which individuals will sacrifice personal goals for sake of in-group. Individualistic cultures foster less sacrifice for group and focus on individual goals, wishes, and desires. Collectivistic cultures foster a greater degree of reliance on group work and group orientation to company and organizational tasks. Harmony within groups is valued more in collectivistic cultures, which members are more likely to engage in behaviors that ensure harmony and refrain from behaviors that threaten harmony. Well, how about your workplace? Are they collectivists? Or individualists. Fourth, we have masculinity and femininity dimension. It is the degree to which culture foster or maintain differences between sexes in work-related values. Culture high on masculinity values such as Japan, Austria, Venezuela, and Italy were associated with the greatest degree of sex differences in work-related values. Cultures low on masculinity values such as Denmark, Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden had the fewest differences between sexes. And the last one, long versus short term orientation, a degree to which culture encourage delayed gratification of material, social and emotional needs. Now, companies with long term oriented culture focus on the future. They are more persistence, perseverance, saving centered and have structured problem solving. While companies with short term oriented cultures, they focus on the present or the past and consider these are more important than the future. These companies have expectations on quick results, fuzzy problem solving and they are more on spending centered rather than saving centered. Note that culture does change and so does corporate culture. After all, let's appreciate and love our country's disposition, uniqueness and culture. That's what shaped us to be who we are today. Aren't we proud to be who we are today? It's always great to discover other culture. And of course, you may adapt other cultures that you found good and could increase your productivity. There's no harm. Be the best version of you each day. I guess that's all I have. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and bye!